What's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, I am going to do my absolute best to make something that resembles a fine art photo out of the image that we have here in front of us. This is just a snapshot that I made in downtown DC, or I guess not downtown, but I was in DC. And I looked up and said, hey, you know what? I'm going to take this photo. Had no real reason to take the photo, but here we are. And now, I'm going to try my best to turn this into something that resembles fine art. First thing that we're going to do is throw some Brilliance AI on here. I think that this is going to help me really just develop the tones. This is a raw image that I took with my Sony a7R4. So I think that it's going to be helpful. Let's take a look here and see what we got. I think that, oh, wrong thing. Here we go. So here's the before and the after. It just kind of opens up the tones, but I know that I want to make this a little bit darker. So I'm not as concerned about opening up the tones overall. So instead, what I think I'm going to do is bring the blacks down because I want this to be really contrasty in the areas that I want it to be contrasty and not so contrasted in the others. Uh, and I would probably even bring the shadow down yeah, that's starting to give me the initial look of the shadow areas holding a lot of that darkness in it. So I think we're good there. Let's see if a camera profile will help at all. And I can't say that any of this is really speaking to me, but maybe we'll come back and visit that later. We'll leave it on on one standard. That seems to do the best job right now. So next thing that I'm going to do is just hop over to effects and I'm going to turn this image black and white and I'm going to give it just a very, very basic treatment. Now, I don't want to throw a ton of filters on this image, so I am just going to go ahead and process the tone of the black and white using the black and white filter. And if I need to do some more editing, then I'll do that later. So let's go ahead and pull down on the brightness overall. I want to pull it all the way down and I think that's going to look pretty good there. Like I'm really looking at trying to get the separation between the highlights and the dark areas uh, in this particular image. So shadow to highlight contrast separation is what I'm going for overall. So I actually am going to push if I can speak, I'm going to push the highlights up and I'm going to bring the blacks down my black point and I think I might even push my white point. I'm not worried about preserving this or printing. This is purely just for digital uh, display. Uh, probably gonna be over on Vero, so I will not worry too much about if I am like clipping in my highlights or my blacks. Let's see if a contrast push helps. Maybe just a little bit. Uh, what I don't want to do is you see on the inside of the building here, if I pull this down, you'll see that get brighter. And if I push it to the right, you see those edges just start to get darker. I do want to keep some highlights in here. Uh, so I'm going to push this back down and I may even crank the highlights just a little bit more and maybe even open the shadowed areas. I'm just looking at those areas that I was just talking about. Um, but I kind of like what this is doing with kind of casting that directional shadow underneath the awning. And I really enjoy that. So here's where we started. And here is where we've gotten so far. Now, the one thing that I won't do in here is the detail because I want to selectively place the detail where I want it. So. I think that is everything I'm going to do in the black and white conversion. I'm not going to mess with the color uh, conversion or response. So next thing I want to do is start working on the detail. And there's a few ways that I could do this. I think I'm going to start with a classic, which is dynamic contrast. And I'm going to hit surreal because I want to just crank this thing all the way up. And I want to put it into just this area right here. So. What I'm going to do first is actually lower the opacity because I think it's way too strong. So what I'm going to do is just pull it down and then slowly 
and incrementally pull it up until I start to see the texture that I like, which I think is about here. So if I were to turn this off and turn it on, you could see it just adds a little bit more kick and punch to those edges. I really do like using Surreal, and I guess I just pulled it up to 50%. So uh, I like it at 50%. And then I'm just going to pull down on my blacks to darken those edges a little bit. And now I'm going to right click on the mask and I'm going to hit invert. And now that I have the mask inverted, I'm going to use the letter M on my keyboard. I'm going to get the, the edges tool because I want to protect the edges. And I want to put this into the center of my image. It's very confusing. I wish on one would fix that, but it is what it is. For those of you who are trying to follow along, essentially what I'm doing is applying the dynamic contrast just inside of this little oval. So I'm going to hit the letter O. That way I get back to the photo and I'm going to drag this down, rotate it around until I get it relatively into the area that I want it. And then I want this to fade ever so slightly just like so so if i turn this off turn it back on you can see it's really just like a narrow focus that's happening like right up the center here of the image and i like that so we're going to leave dynamic contrast alone and i should rename these but for the sake of time in this particular tutorial i am not going to rename these but i do recommend that when you're doing this for yourself that you do rename your uh, layers now it's time to start working on really narrowing in that focus on the building here so what i'm going to do is add in a tone enhancer and i am going to just pull down on the exposure and I'm really just looking at the bottom section here and the sky area uh, because what I want to do is just target the light right into this area. And I think that that's good for now. I can clean this up a little bit here in a little bit, but with the masking bug selected, I'm going to select my reflected gradient. Click right here in the middle and look at that. That alone just looks really, really nice to me. Now, that's not the direction that I want the light to travel, even though this is a really good look. I actually want the direction of the light to travel diagonally. So what I'm going to do is rotate this until I get that in the direction that I want it, which is probably about here. And I am going to pull that one in and pull this one in. And I think that that looks pretty good. So if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see it's kind of like a letterbox on the overall image. And I'm not pulling this down like entirely. I'm only pulling it down just, and honestly, I could probably pull it down just that much. And I may want to, nah, I'm not gonna worry about opening the shadows. I was thinking about getting some detail back under here which I might need to do. Um, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to worry about that. I should have been paying attention up here to keep some of that detail, but that's okay because I'm about to get rid of a bunch of the detail in this image anyhow. So now that I have my tone adjustment with the light, I think I'm good. In fact, I need to change something. So I need to paint this in paint the effect in right down here so hit the letter o and i'm gonna hit the uh shift x or i have a hot key on my mouse here hit the letter o and i just want to cover up this building i don't need the building to have any of that extra light and there that should keep the gradient from getting too messed up yeah so you can see i'm just putting the light on the building that's kind of my goal here all right now 
time to get a little bit more artistic if we haven't already and that means i'm going to throw in a blur filter now gaussian blur is one of my favorite tools i use it on a lot of my images but this time i want to complement the letterbox effect that i was making so what i'm going to do is go ahead and hit the letter m on my keyboard to get the reflected gradient again and i'm just going to drop this right down the middle rotate that around and this time I'm going to pull this down a little bit further into the frame because I only need a sliver of this to really be in focus for the look that I'm going for. So now what I'll do is just crank this up a touch. I say a touch, I really mean a lot. And that kind of blurs out everything. Uh, we might need to fade this a little bit better. So that way it looks more aesthetic, at least in my opinion, this looks a little bit more aesthetic. If I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see how I'm just kind of blurring things and really getting that overall uh, look, I think, at least a look that I enjoy. So the next thing that I'm going to do to this image is add in a glow. So let's hit add filter and add in the glow and i really think that this helps pull the overall look together especially with the blur so i'm just going to pull the amount up until i really start to see that working uh, and then i'm going to pull on the halo effect here and it just softens up everything and i really do appreciate the soft look that i get with this particular um concept if you will or technique uh, but what i think i want to do is lower the density right here in the middle so what i'm going to do is hit the letter m we're going to use a regular we're going to use the edges tool click right there in the middle and let me hit oh make sure that yeah this is doing what i want it to do and so I'll do that then we'll fade it out it's a letter O. yep that's looking pretty good and then what i normally do with things like this is i want it over the entire image um, but i want it very gradually so right now it's not happening at all over the rest of the image which could be fine but what I want to do is come up to masking and then I'm going to pull down on the density. So if I hit the letter O, what you'll see is it just fades those edges ever so slightly. It just fades the edges ever so slightly. So I'll pull it back up and then I'll just start to pull it down and look at where that gradient goes. Uh, maybe something like so. And what I'll do is since I am using a uh, the density trick, I have too large of a feather. So I'm just gonna pull this down and I'll reposition this over the image. Right now, what I'm looking at is the actual transition between 100% of the effect being applied to the image to uh, the gradient and then also mixing that in with the density if i pull it all the way up it's not those black areas are not getting any of the effect and as i pull this down you can see that they turn gray and that's kind of what i'm going for something that looks more like that so let's hit the letter o and we'll just reshape this to go with the direction of the light and i think that that looks pretty good so if i turn it off and turn it back on you can see it just kind of pulls the entire look together for me so here is where we start it with a relatively boring looking image and then we end it with something that looks more artistic and i really appreciate it, it looks like it has been styled intentionally and not just a bunch of random things put on there and as you can see i really only used five adjustments to actually do this so 
Hopefully you found some value in this content and it inspired you to do your own creative fine art looks inside of All One Photo Raw. If you want to save some money when you pick up On One Photo Raw, and now that Photo Raw 2025 has been announced, you can use my coupon code FreeWallPhotos20 to save some money at checkout. And I greatly appreciate everyone who uses that coupon code. If you got questions, leave them in the comment section. And if you want one on one coaching, come over to my website sign up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session, and I'd be happy to walk you through a workflow just for you. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.